Hi, I'm John Trishler with SPV Parts, and today we are going to install a Raptor six pod fog light kit with the rigid uh, radiance fog light. Whether you are looking for rigid lights for your Raptor or Baja Designs, the radiance version, or the Pro Series, this installation video will show you how to install those. So first, we've got our bracket. For those of you that want horizontal slots, we have given you both. Now this is important to understand when you look at these brackets, and I'm gonna get a little closer here, and this is why it's actually very important to understand this, that the front of the bumper of the Raptor, and you can kind of see it right here, it's not straight, all right? It, it curves, all right? So when we engineered this modification to our bracket, we looked at where it curves. Having straight horizontal lines is not going to give you that adjustment side to side that you want, again, in the right position. Because the further you move that light to the right or to the left, it's going to either hit the bumper if it's all across the front here. If it's all across the back, you're going to lose some structural integrity. You don't want to do that. Um, but again, as that curves around that bumper, it's important to follow that line with your horizontal slots. So again, our newest uh, iteration of our SPV performance parts brackets, I believe are gonna be the best that you'll find out there for any kind of adjustability, regardless of your situation and regardless of whether you have Rigid Industries lights or Baja Designs lights or anyone else for that matter, this is gonna give you that adjustment that you need in every direction. So I think what you're gonna find is that these vertical slots that we talked mostly about are gonna be your most critical. And you can still utilize those in the same locations as before, which we found are really the best spot for 90% of your lights out there. However, these new 360 lights or some larger lights like this, um, you might see some slight added benefit to being able to space those a little differently because of the case size um, versus some of the smaller ones. Or for example, if you got the, um, the side shooter version of the rigid light, which is a little wider light versus the other two that you might put in there. So with, again, with this, you've got the ability to move those from left to right and from front to back in any location. That our setup here is gonna be the most versatile that you're gonna find anywhere with any bracket, regardless of which lights that you're going to utilize. And again, they're all stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about rust or anything like that. All right, next we have our Radiance lights, or in this case, it could be the Pro lights from Rigid or any of the Baja Designs lights as well. I wanted to point out one thing here really quick so people understand about the Radiance lights versus the Pro lights. The Radiance lights do not have plugs on the end. You'll notice that these are bare wires. This is just how they come right out of the box. In that case, there is no connector on the end of the light. Well, that's all right. We don't, you know, you obviously don't need that adapter. What you need are connectors, and we provide those with our universal harness kit. And this is what that bag of connectors looks like. So, again, just like this adapter here, which you don't need the adapter, you're just going to put the pins on and the connector on your existing light. So this way, you always have a waterproof connector on your lights regardless. So whether or not the light came with a connector, then we're going to have an adapter that's going to fit. If it didn't come with a connector, then we're going to supply you with a set of connectors that's going to match up to the harness that you can simply just put the pins on and slide the connector on. So this is how you do that. First, I want you to pay close attention because there are two different style pins that come with the kits in the harnesses. All right, so you've got one pin, and we're going to touch on this later on. It's got a hole in the middle. It's a tube. That is the pin that goes with these single connectors. These go on your switch wires. You want to put those aside because you don't want to put the wrong pins in these connectors here or they won't plug in correctly to your harness because you need the matching connectors. So these connectors with the holes in them are already in the harness end. So you need the, the type that's going to slide into that. So again, if it's got a hole in it, move it aside with these style connectors. The rubber seals, are the same for both, so that doesn't matter. You can count so many aside for that and so many aside for that, so separate them. So now that we've done that, you're gonna see your bare wires here. We're gonna take one of our rubber seals and slide it over top of that wire, just like so. 
And there's, there's a couple different style crimpers that you can get. This one is kind of an all-in-one. You can see it kind of sticks out the back here. It takes and crimps all three sections of that pin at one time. You can pick those up on Amazon. Uh, pretty cheap. This one's called IWISS, IWIS. And the part number is IWS-1424BN. So that's that style. This one is about 12 bucks. You can pick that up on Amazon as well. Same brand. And this part number is IWS-1424B. So I'm sure if you search those, um, you'll be able to find those. Again, we're a little close here, so I'll show you that. So this is the standard style. And this you're going to crimp a couple of times as you go through. This one's all in one, so we'll just use this for quickness here. So we just slide the pin into the crimper just like this, and it's prepped and ready to go. You're going to slide one of these rubber connectors onto the wire, just like this, the first one that you want to crimp. And you want to bring that rubber piece. You can see the small end is on the tip of the wire. I'm trying to get it to focus here. The small end is, is up by the tip of the wire. The fat end is down. Um, you want to stop where the insulation stops. This bare wire that you see here, you want to get that inside the pin here right here. You see these wings right here? All right, it's very important. That wire is going to be what you want to have in there to crimp those over. The large wings right here, those crimp over top of that rubber seal. So we're going to do that real quick. And I'm going to show you one real close. You can see how easy that is. We've got that lined up, squeeze down, and just like that, we're done. So now I'm going to show you this up close, try to get it to follow us and focus so you can see what that looks like. That's how it's supposed to look. So we're going to do the other three on this light. And so this is what all three should look like. Just like that. Now all we have to do is slide on our connector and you're going to make sure that you have the wires lined up in the right position. All right, the easiest way to do that is to take your harness that you've already got, all right, that already has those red, white, and black wires popping out of it here. Line up that, that connector so that it's, it's the same direction as you would plug it into, all right? Then you can make sure that your wires go in the right sockets. So you can see, so we got white here, red in the middle, black on the end. Um, and so you'll also notice on the end of the connector here, it's got letters, A, B, and C. On the end of your harness, you've got the same letters, A, B, and C. All right. So by looking at this, if you want to remember this, A is black, B is red, and C is white. All right. A is black. We've got A right here. Red in the middle, white on the outside. Pins are lined up. You just slide these in. They'll go click. Once they're all in place, you can push this clip down. Make sure the wires are out of the way for the little dividers in the middle. And that's it. We're done. Our connector's on there. So now it's ready for us to just plug in to our connector. Once we have our light installed, we can just plug in our connector, just like so, and it's ready to install on the truck. With the Radiant Series, we are going to give you a custom one-piece harness. This is our triple fog harness. So with our triple fog harness, similar to the A-pillar harness, except for this one's going to go the length down to the front of the bottom of each side of the bumper, this has three pairs of connectors, and each is numbered one, two, and three. One, two, and three on each side. And then when you get to your switch wire end or your firewall end, you've got one, two, and three with those connections. And then you've got the one white wire connection for backlights if you have them. If you don't, again, you just don't use that. But you've got it there. And so you've got three connections here. So let's say you want to connect three separate pairs to three separate switches. You can do that with this harness. So you put it on switch one, switch two, switch three. Let's say that you've got, for example, you got a radiance set of lights and you want to put all three pairs on one switch. Well, 
you don't have to cut the wires and splice them together and twist them. You just get our three-way splitter combiner adapter. And those are going to just plug into each connection here, just like so. And now you can put them all on one switch, just like so. All right, so that's another application. Pretty cool. Again, don't forget, you've got adapters, so no matter what lights you have, you're going to be able to connect to any of those lights. No, no splicing, cutting, or any of that, right? So to match this to this, you're going to get this adapter, which just plugs into our universal harness, just like so. Now, that will plug into your light, as you see. Real simple. On the Pro Series kit, if you do get one of the Pro Series kits, you'll notice when you order it on the order page, the custom harness is optional and not standard. We want to make sure that you have everything to install your light kit completely, but we don't necessarily give you items included in there and raise the price if you don't need them. There are a few options and we put them in there so you can select yes or no that may help cosmetically and I'll go over those things here really quick that may improve some cosmetics, the way they install or the ease of install, but they aren't required. So rather than just raise the price artificially and say it's included, we keep the price as low as possible, give you the option as low as possible for the option. You can add it or not add it. So let me go through that real quick. So on the Pro Series, the reason that it's not included and the reason it's not required is because each of the Pro Lights will come with its own generic harness from Rigid. You can get by with the generic harnesses that come in the boxes with the lights. It's not ideal, but you can get by with it. So we keep that price down again and give you the option to add the custom harness. If you add the custom harness on the Pro Series lights, you will automatically already have the plugs, the upgrades on that harness as well. This is, and we talked about this in another video, so I'm going to be really brief on that, but this is the standard bracket that comes with your lights. Okay, And the way that this bracket mounts to your light is it mounts on the bottom. You see the holes right here? See the holes right here? All right, so this bracket is going to mount just like this to those holes. So it comes out the top, as you see, or actually the bottom, I'm sorry, like this. It comes out the bottom right there. All right, and the reason that this bracket is designed like this is because it's on this slot. If you wanted to mount it from the back, it could swivel like this and you can mount it from the back side. But in this purpose, to aim the lights forward, it would mount right like this and the bracket would come off the bottom. Do you see what's wrong with that picture? For some people, this may bother you. It doesn't, it doesn't change the way that the light works, how much light you have, the direction. It goes out uniformly, whether it's like this or like this. But the problem is, if this is a cosmetic thing that bothers you, and it does a lot of people, because the brackets mount like this from the top, this needs to mount like this. That puts the words rigid upside down. Now to fix that, there is an optional bracket. This is the optional bracket. And what it does, as you see here, the holes there, we can turn our light the other direction now. We can slide that long bracket in all the way to the bottom. And there we have it now mounting from the top with the words rigid right side up. Now, you don't have to get these brackets. Take a black marker on the front of the case like this so you really don't see the words. And that's it. But if that bothers you, and you want the words right side up, you'll see the option on both the Pro Kit and the Radiance Kit to have the extended brackets. But that, that's what the flip brackets are because they flip the lights. All right, so now we're ready to get started and we're gonna go ahead and get started installing these, these lights into this Raptor. We need to know what tools to use, right? So let's take a look at the tools. We have a standard crimping tool and they're gonna come in all shapes and sizes. Hopefully you know what a crimping tool is, but again, you just need that to crimp down on those on either bullet connectors or the supplied butt connectors that um, are going to crimp down on the wires, on the ends of the wires. So you need a standard set of crimping tools. Um, you are going to need some zip ties. Uh, we don't include the zip ties, but you can get those at any hardware store. Zip ties are gonna be used to just secure your wiring or our wrenches. All right, so we are going to need, first off, this is a 4.0 Allen key. And the Allen key is going to be used to put the little screws in the sides of the lights into the brackets. You're going to need a ratchet and you're going to need an extension and a 13 millimeter socket. Now, if you don't have an extension and you'd rather use a deep well socket, you can use that as well. 
um, but you'll just need a little longer socket. And the reason why is because you're going to want to get past this bracket here to get to your bolt where this is going to go. So 13 millimeter and a ratchet. Then you're going to need a couple of wrenches. Now I like these ratcheting wrenches because you have no effort. They're just like a ratchet. You're going to need a 13 millimeter and you're going to need a 10 millimeter. You will also need an eight millimeter wrench or socket to remove the factory six millimeter bolt and sheet metal clip. And that is it for your tools. You'll notice behind the bumper, you have this brace that goes from a piece off of the frame here to the front of the bumper right there. We need to take this bolt off and then we're going to remove this clip. All right, as you see, we have removed the bolt and the sheet metal clip from the brace and the hole. All right, so I want to point out here real quick before we install our driver side bracket, you'll notice the D cut out of the bracket here. That D is for driver side. We've got our driver bracket in, and as you see through this hole here, we've got our placement bolt that came with our brackets in through the hole of the brace and through the hole that that went through in the bumper. That is securing our bracket now to the bumper, and we are, we are going to put a nut on the other side of this bolt. We also have our carriage bolt through the smaller hole that already exists on the other end here. Looking up through this hole in the bumper as much as we can, you should be able to see the two bolts and nuts on them coming through there. So this is where we're going to need our wrenches on this side. The one to the left is the 10 millimeter, and the one to the right is the larger 13 millimeter. So we're going to need our, our flat wrenches for those. Now you can see here why we need a flat wrench, because it's a tight space. A lot easier than a hand wrench. That's one of the reasons I like the ratcheting wrenches for this tight space like this. So this is the spot where you're going to need to use your ratchet and your wrench. And basically your wrench is just going to hold the nut on the other side in place while you turn the ratchet to tighten it up. Now obviously I've only got one hand, so I can't, uh, can't completely turn this, so I'm going to have to do that uh, off camera, but you get the idea. Now we're going to tighten this not all the way down yet. We're going to get it really close so that it's a little bit snug, but we can still push it up and down because as you saw, these bolts and this bracket has a slot, so these, these bolts can run up and down in the slot. We can push the bracket up higher or down lower, and we're going to position it just right so that uh, our lights look really good and centered when we install them. So I've tightened this down uh, most of the way, not completely tight, but again, um, tight enough that I can get it where I want it. And then I've pushed the bracket into place and you see how that metal ridge right there, try to keep it from going out of focus, that metal ridge right there, just along the bottom side of that bracket, you see that? The best position I found is if you get that bracket just about flush with the bottom edge of that lip. So when it stops, you know, about flush there, because now, see, as we move up, it's going to be just barely above that opening, which gives our brackets, when we hang our brackets down, they should be pretty well centered, and the mounting point of the bracket should be above that ridge. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and tighten these bolts the rest of the way, because we have our brackets in place. And if we do need to adjust it anymore afterwards, once we get our uh, lights installed, We'll be able to loosen those bolts a little bit and move them. However, it is a little bit more difficult to do after the lights are installed because the lights and the bolts get in the way of your wrenches. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to install our brackets or our mini brackets that go into the lights into the large fog light bracket, as you see, like with the three slots. Now, it's harder to show you this once it's up in the truck bumper, so I want to show you outside of it first. So you, you can see down below here, you've got a washer, you've got a lock washer, and then you've got the bolt on top of that, and that's how you want to insert these from the bottom side. So you're gonna have your carriage bolt that's gonna go through your bracket, your small bracket up through your large bracket. You've got your washer, then you've got your lock nut, or lock washer, I'm sorry, your lock washer, and then your nut. All right, so now we've got three brackets installed in the bottom of our main bracket. As you see now, when we move up, that is gonna sit flush with that ridge of the front bumper, and then our lights will go inside that. And again, if we need to adjust it a little bit, one end or the other, we can loosen those bolts just a little bit and do that after we get our lights in there. It's just easier if we get it as close as possible um, before we put our lights in there. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to insert our lights in our brackets. Now again, 
it's difficult to film this up in there, so I'm going to show you um, outside here so you can see a little bit better and there's better lighting and so on. We're going to need to take one of these nuts and put it down in that hole underneath it here. Now, I, I usually like to do that with one finger holding that in place like this while I take the other hand and I start turning the screw until it starts moving that nut in there. And then once you get that snug down where it's going to be up to that nylon for that lock nut, obviously that's as much as you're going to get from your fingers, then you'll be able to take this Allen wrench and you'll be able to turn that and tighten that up. Now you won't want to tighten it up all the way obviously until you get it positioned right, but you'll want to get it snug so that you can twist, turn, and pull that light side to side, forward and back, and get them straight. So now you can see we've got our first light attached. Now I've got a little bit of leeway here to adjust that light if I need to. I've got it fairly tight here on the top, but I can I can pull on it or twist it a little bit if I need to go left or right to get that straight in the front here. So when I get all three of these in here, I'm going to stand back and kind of eyeball it so that I can adjust those left and right to get those straight and looking straight ahead. All right, so we've got all three lights installed now. Now we just need to do a little fine tuning to make sure that they're all straight. So I'm going to stand back here and kind of look at it and see, you know, what I need to adjust, what I need to move in any direction so that they're straight. Now I can look at them from the side to make sure that they're aimed correctly in the up and down position. And I noticed that this one seems to be a little bit aimed up, so I need to push that one down. These other two look pretty straightforward. So once I get those in their right positions, I'll be able to tighten up all the bolts. All right, so we're all done here on the driver's side and everything's straight and lined up. And we're gonna repeat all these steps on the passenger side now. And once we're done with that, then we can run our wire harness and make our connections. So now we have both sides in. Both sides are lined up, just like we did on the driver's side, the passenger side as well. So now all that is left is to run our harness, which is actually very simple. And we're going to connect our lights and then connect it to our switch wires. So I've laid the harness out here so you can see how it lays out and how it installs. So you'll see the long end here, right there. And in this case, like I said, we uh, put plugs on it. So depending on the harness that you get, the standard radiance harness does not have plugs on them. But there are plugs on this harness. You can see this long end that has three connections goes to the driver side. All right. And then the short end with the three connectors or three sets of wires for the lights would go to the passenger side. All right. And then we're going to go down the other length of the harness. It will Y off into two pieces. One will be wires and the other of that Y will have a ring connector on it. This is your ground. So if you see that Y with the ground, the ring connector for the ground, you know that is the area that goes to the switch wires and your other end goes to your lights. You wanna start on the passenger side because you're gonna actually throw the wire over from the passenger side behind the bumper here, we're gonna show you in just a second, to the driver's side, you'll pull it through. And then you're gonna take this end and you're going to pull it straight up through the engine bay and take it alongside the battery. All right, so we're under the bumper. You can see our lights here from the back side. All right, you can see the frame, you can see the tire, okay? And we're underneath of this skid plate here under the front bumper. And you see right above that skid plate, I've taken that long end that we were talking about and I pushed it across there. So now I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna pull it across and I'm gonna plug it into our lights. This is the other side of that skid plate and here is the end of my harness. Okay, so I pulled that through. Now I can plug it into my lights. Now I wanna keep an eye on which lights I plug into what number. So like, again, these are numbered, whether it has the plugs on them or you get the radiant standard harness with the uh, butt connectors. Either way, you wanna pay attention to these numbers. So this is two, this one's number three, this one's number one. So I'm gonna look at my, li my uh, lights up here and which position they're in. And yeah, it doesn't matter which one you choose, you just wanna keep in mind which one it is depending on which switch you want to put them on. So we're going to make number one the far outside. That's, that's probably the easiest thing to do. So number one, so this is number one. So one on the outside. All right, two in the middle, two in the middle. All right, and three on the far inside. Now they should all match. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing now. One, we did the far outside 
two, the middle, and three, the very inner, closest to each other. And again, it doesn't matter which order you put them in as long as you match them up. All right, so we've now secured it here on the passenger side. We uh, zip tied some of the slack here from the lights themselves right there on the that brace that we saw earlier. And we zip tied the other part of this harness right here to the frame that gets all that slack out. And then we've got the harness going in here and we are just going to find a couple of wires. We can zip tie that to along inside here to keep that slack from bouncing around inside. All right, so we have zip tied our excess on the other side and you can see everything's secure. We can clip our zip ties off here in a minute. But now we're able to just push our wires up through here between the wheel well liner, right there between the wheel well liner and up into the engine bay and pull them through. All right, now the last option we have here is our radiance backlight wire. Again, this is an option. The standard way that you can connect your amber backlights to the fog lights to your vehicle, or, in this, or if you had the rear kit, like the 360 kit, for example, which we covered in another install video, the white wire from that, you would connect that to one of your auxiliary switches. That's the standard way. So let's say that you put your lights on switches one, two, and three, you could put your backlight, and when I say backlight, I mean the amber, not lights in the back of your truck. Backlight meaning the light behind. Your backlight, you can connect your backlight wire to, say, switch number six, or say, switch number five. Both switch number five and six are only five amps. They're not gonna power very many things. But in this case, the amperage on the amber and the red backlights for our Radiant Series light are so low that you'd have no problem with that. Now the switches themselves, when you turn the switches on, they're gonna power the lights as long as the ignition's on. If you turn the ignition off, it powers down the switch panel. So if you leave switch number six on, for example, and you had your amber backlight wire connected to switch number six, every time that you turn the truck off, it's gonna power off. When you turn it on, it's gonna power on. That's the standard simple way, but we actually came up and developed a new product, which is this backlight wire kit. And the reason we created this backlight wire kit is because there are several customers out there that want to use all their switches. They want all six of them. They don't want to tie up a switch. They just want the lights to come on when the truck comes on and go off when the truck goes off. And so we developed this. The other way to do that is a way that we definitely don't recommend and a way that people in the past have gotten themselves in trouble, which is to splice into factory wiring, say behind the headlight into like the marker lights here in the grill or another wire in some other harness. Again, anytime you're cutting factory wiring, you're running the risk of warranty issues. So we try to eliminate those from the installation process. Your switches are designed to be standalone. They're designed to have components added to them. They're not tied to anything electronically in the truck. They are their own entity. So to eliminate the possibility of warranty concerns by cutting into factory harnesses so that you don't have to use your switch wires, we created this product. And this product, this backlight wire kit, utilizes a special pin, a Ford pin, and it goes into a socket, and we have an install video for that, so I'm not gonna go into that right now, I'm just gonna explain it. It goes into a socket in a plug-in in the passenger side kick panel near the fuse panel. And that will, when you, plug, when you slide that pin in, no installation required, you just slide the pin in, it clips right in place, you plug the plug back in, this wire is then live, it gives you ignition power, and you will be able to power your backlights on ignition. So you turn the ignition on, you got your backlights, you turn it off, turns them off. And then you've got your backlights without tapping into any factory wiring and without utilizing your switches. So that is another option if you decide to go that route. Many people do, it's a pretty popular thing. How to install your backlight wire adapter that's tied into your lock unlock feature, marker lights, parking lights, etc. All right, here's our adapter. There's a couple different versions. So you're gonna to wanna to indicate which model year Raptor that you have. All right, you're just gonna remove this rubber cover from the top of the, the grill by removing these push pins from each of these holes. Just look around and find these push pins. You're gonna remove these, okay? Once you do, the cover will lift up just like this. Pull that out of the way. Unplug this connector right here. Plug your adapter in between the connector until you hear it click, just like so. Tuck your connector back down, out of the way. Run your cable under that 
cover area where that cover is going to cover it up. Run it along and behind the headlight you can get real fancy if you want to get it cleaner here run it underneath it here. I just did this real quick. Then you can run it back there to where your wire harnesses are going to be uh, by your switch wires. And then when you're done with that you're just going to reinstall the cover in reverse. Take your cover, slide it under the edge here, just like so. You don't want to tuck it underneath your air filter inlet. And then reinstall your pins, and that's it. So the first thing I want you to take note of is that with every Raptor, every time you purchased one of these new, and if you don't have this, look on eBay, I'm sure you can get a used one. The truck should have a, a Raptor supplemental owner's manual in the glove box with the regular manual. The supplemental manual is going to tell you, if you look up in the wiring section, and Ford is notorious about changing these colors throughout the years. Here we go. Under accessories, they're going to show you, I'll get a little closer here. They're going to show you what color wire is which switch. So you want to get this owner's manual right here, the supplemental owner's manual, and it's going to show you which switch is which, how many amps are on each switch, and so on, so that you can mark or number these and keep track of them. So the first thing, the most important thing, is actually finding the correct bundle of wires. Uh, because as it shows you in that manual as well, there are actually two bundles of wires. And I've actually got one down here that, that we had used in the past for something. And it is one of the six that is the dead wire. So typically, the actual live wires are going to be up higher, like right up here underneath of the computer. And then the dead set is down below. Now the reason they have a dead set is so that you can connect the two light colors together here. And then that will give you a pass-through set of wires to the passenger side floor panel. If you wanted to connect a Nintendo or a DVD headrest or something to a switch, then you can have that with that um, pass-through wire because the main powered ones are under the hood right here. So we've already got connectors on these and I've already got them numbered so I already know which colors are which. But I'm going to go ahead and cut these connectors off of these lights so that we can start over. When you get your wires, your bundle of wires just like this, they're just going to have black heat shrink on the end of them. You're going to strip that off until you have bare wires. Now, with our new universal wire harness kit, you're going to get a bag of these connectors. And you're going to notice that these single connectors, these are the ones that go to your switches, to your switch wires. Make sure you pull these aside. And you also want to take note because in, in some cases, the pins and the connectors might be mixed together. For these connectors, the ones with the green rubber seals on them like this, whether it's a one, one way or a, a three way connector, the ones with those seals use these barrel type pins. Notice the hole in the middle. If it's a pointed pin and there's no hole in the middle, it's the wrong one. It goes with a different connector. So make sure you sort these out. Again, you want the tubular ported hole, the female style pin goes with these connectors. So before we install these, we've got to prep our wires. So let's go ahead and pull our wires aside here. And we're going to cut off the existing connectors first. Um, but now, one by one, we're going to strip off the, strip off some insulation here on the end of this wire, just like this. And when we're ready, we're going to slide our pin on. Now, take note that as you go through these, um, some of these wires are thinner. The 5 amp switch wires are like extremely thin. So depending, you might want to make to strip off enough that you can fold it over and crimp on a little bit more wire when you do this. It certainly doesn't hurt anything, especially on the last two wires. Um, and you can do it on the, on the second two as well. The, the, uh, the first two are 15 amps. They're a little bit bigger wire, and they're fine. So let's go ahead and first we want to get out one of our rubber seals, okay? And then we'll get our pin, our first pin out, and we'll be ready to crimp that on. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to slide this rubber seal over top of this wire, just like this. Um, my number here is a little high, so I'm going to see if I can slide that down some, maybe. It's been on there for a little while, though, so it may not want to cooperate. All right, that's probably good enough. All right, so we'll slide our rubber seal on there, and then we can line our pin up here. Now, you'll notice when you put the wire through, this is important too, you see these little, little grooves right here, this is the section that pinches down on your wire. 
Make sure the wire is in here. If the wire is not in here, you're not going to get a good connection. You want these to be solid, okay? This rubber seal, when you slide it through with the wire in it, it's going to come up to these outer wings just like this because you're going to crimp these down over top of that rubber seal. Now, there's a couple different types of crimpers that you can get. These are, these are some, I think we showed you these earlier, maybe not, but these are some uh, crimpers that you can get on Amazon for about 12 bucks. Pretty basic, pretty simple. You line it up with the right gauge wire like this, and you crimp down over top of the wire and over top of these little wings, just like so. And then you do the same thing here with the outer part for the rubber seal. If you want something that's a little more all-in-one, you can pick up a set like this that has, you slide the pin in it, and it actually crimps over the rubber seal and the wire at the same time, just like so. Um, so that's just kind of a one-click instead of, instead of doing it a couple of different times. So for time's sake, we'll go ahead and use this one for now. So I'm going to slide that rubber seal over top of there, take my wire and my connector, and I slide that in here just like this, make sure I got that lined up, and then I'm going to squeeze down and let up. And if I did this right, which it looks like I did, I've got my wire. Try to get in there nice and close. So now you can see when I crimp this down, I've got my wire in these inner wings, which, which you really want to crimp down well on that wire. And that's a nice solid connection. It's not going to pull loose. So now when I'm ready to go ahead and slide my connector on, I can go ahead and take my green connector here and we can just slide it right over top of that that pin. Hopefully you can see me do that. See so slides the you slide this end, the back end here, over top of that pin till it clicks, just like so. And then we can fold this back side down over top of that. And now we've got one wire that's ready to go. So now when we run our harnesses, we can just plug them into our switch wires. And if you ever decided that you wanted to move lights around, switch one harness from one switch to another switch and so on, it's as simple as just unplugging this this connector and you can move it to another one or plug in a splitter or a, or, or a, a combiner or, or and so on. So it's a very, very simple process. So we'll go ahead and put the rest of these connectors on all six of our wires. All right, so like I said earlier, the wire um, gauge on that last five and six wire is so super thin um, that you really, especially on those last two, want to strip it a little extra long and fold that over so that you can get good contact on that wire when you slide your connectors on. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put our other connector on here and then we'll move that out of the way. All right, so now we're prepped for that one and we'll move it out of the way. And then we're gonna do that to the other four, just like we did on the first two. All right, so we've got our final ones on here and now we can go ahead and put our last two connectors on and then we should be all prepped and ready to go. And you can see now we've got all six of our connectors prepped and ready to go for our any of our harnesses. Um, and they're prepped again for each switch, and if we want to move them around, we can move them around and so on. But that is uh, how simple that is to install these connectors onto your switch wires. Now comes the fun part. We can make our, we can plug in our connections to our different lights. And depending, I've got several here, obviously this is our prototype truck, so it doesn't really matter how many that you have. Um, and it doesn't matter how many that you have that may have like the amber backlights and, and so on. All right, so we talked about this earlier um, with our backlight connection for our rear taillight adapter or our new marker light adapter that plugs in under the grill, which you see here. This gives us our power for our amber backlights through this connection here. And so in this case, we've got several different light kits hooked up. We've got, we've got several different wire harnesses between light bars and fog lights and rear lights and, and so on. And we have several backlights to power. So that's where these splitters come in. So there's three-way splitters, two-way splitters, and we've even got a coupler. I'm going to show you a couple of different scenarios. Let's say, for example, we're connecting our backlights to our backlight adapter here from the front grill, and we want to split that. Say we want to split that to the rear harness, to the fog light harness here, the rear harness here, and last, we want to split it to a light bar here. We can use a three-way splitter. But in this case, we actually have more than that. Let's see how many we have. We have the rear lights. We have the front fog lights. We have the upper light bar. We have the lower light bar. And we have a bumper uh, bar with some LED lights on that as well that are all backlit. So that's five. So we got three here. So we could split it again 
but that's only going to give us four. But if we sp to put two three-way splitters in here, just like this, then that's going to give us the five that we need. So we can combine two three-way splitters. So now we've got that backlight adapter plugged into two three-way splitters, which gives us five connections, and we can begin plugging those in to our white wires for our backlights, just like so, one by one by one, and so on. That's going to connect our, our white wires for our backlights. Now, in this particular case, we're actually doing that a little bit different because we have our taillight adapter installed in the rear of this vehicle, which also powers the amber backlights. So in this case, we're, re we're really pulling that from the back. So we're going to get rid of this marker adapter for this particular installation because we're pulling that power from the rear. So with that being said, here is our rear harness. So we've got our white wire here. So this white wire from our rear harness, instead of pulling power from the front marker, it actually has power. It's powered now from the taillight adapter. So what we need in this case is we need this coupler. Okay, so this coupler has two male ends on it. And so we plug that into the rear harness. And now if we had just the front harness, for example, like right here, we could plug the front and the rear harness together just like this. And then that taillight adapter is gonna supply power to both the front and the rear. But we've actually got more than just the front harness up here. We actually have several um, harnesses up here. So this gives us one connection now, but we don't have five anymore. We've only got four because we're pulling off of this. So we need four. So since we need four, we, we would need a two-way splitter and a three-way splitter. And that two-way and three-way splitter, we plug that in here just like so. Now we have four connections. So now we can plug that into our coupler from the rear harness, and then we can begin plugging that into our backlights for our other harnesses, just like so. So let's go ahead and plug in each one of these. All right, so here's our last harness here now. So we'll plug in that other white connector from that right here. And so now we've got all of our backlight connections plugged in. Again, we haven't had to use any tools to do this. Once we put our connectors on our switch wires, we're ready to go just plugging stuff in. All right, so now, um, let's go ahead and start plugging in our fog lights into our switch wires. One of these fog lights is an SAE, and the other is a spot, and the other is a driving series. Now, the SAE you definitely want to have on its own switch. And so, that being said, the other two, the driving and the spot, you can put them on the same switch as long as there's not too much amp draw. So, we can take one of these two-way splitters again, and we can plug that into the two that are not uh, the SAE so that they're on one switch now. So that frees up another switch. And we actually need another switch because we've got too many light bars right now. So our SAE light is on switch number two. So we can go ahead and use a two-way splitter combiner now in a different way. And we can plug that into number one and number three, just like this. And that combines those two lights now onto one. And so now we can just use one switch. So whichever lights you're combining, you always need to make sure that you don't overdraw from whatever the amp draw available is on those switch wires. So again, switches one and two are 15 amps, three and four are 10 amps max, and five and six are only five amps. You're not gonna get much to work on that five amp switch without blowing it. So um, a lot of times in the rear, case of the rear lights, you're typically okay, they're smaller, um, they don't draw as much, but if you put a high powered one back there, you're gonna need one of our relay adapters um, to do that. So let's go ahead and think here, our, our two, uh, lights that we have on this circuit, one spot, one driving, they're 360 series, they're two amps a piece. Technically, they're under the 10 amps of switch number three and four. We can probably get away with that, um, but I'd rather be safe and put them on a 15 amp switch, I believe, because there's really not much we can do with our light bar set up here in the front. It's gonna draw a lot more amperage than the 15 amp anyway, so it's not gonna make much difference. So again, some of it's just thinking this out, but let's go ahead and put this on switch number two. So there's our numbered switch wire. So there's number two. So we're good to go there. All right, and then switch number three, we're gonna put our SAEs on. So we, we can remember that pretty easy. Switch number three for our SAEs. Okay, that leaves switch number one. What do we wanna put on switch number one? I think we'll put our light bar on switch number one. We're gonna put our rear lights on switch number six. They've always been on six. Um, I like that because you can, you can think, hey, I'm gonna to go to the furthest out switch, and you know that's your rear lights. So you don't have to try to guess at it when you're trying to flip those on um, on the fly. So we'll plug those into switch number six. 
All right, so now we've got our SRL light bar, and I'm going to trace that wire here because I want that on switch number one. So here, here is that SRL light bar. We're going to put it on switch number one. Where are you, switch number one? Oh, there it is. Okay, there's switch number one, just like this. All right, so now we've got that plugged into switch number one. And then the last two things we have are light bars. We've got a lower light bar, which isn't going to draw very many amps. And then we've got a, a big light bar set up. It's not really a light bar. We've got, uh, we've got four 360 series six inch LEDs, which draw, I believe, six or so amps a piece, almost 20 amps for all four of them. So they're definitely going to be too much for that. We might as well just put those on the lowest power switch with our relay adapter, um, number five, which means that we can probably get by with the 10 amps on switch number four without a relay adapter now. That gives us a little bit more flexibility to just have to use one relay adapter. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now to switch number four. And then the only thing we're going to need to do now is just connect our relay harness to this light bar and we should be all set. Now everything is connected except for number five, which again is going to get our relay harness for that and that's going to power our light bar. So that's how simple it is. And then from there, it's just a matter of tucking this stuff out of the way. You can zip tie it, you can bring it down here. Again, it's just more of an arrangement after that point, but, um, but it's a real simple setup once you have your connectors on your switch wires, it's real, real simple to just plug everything in. And that's the whole idea with this whole plug and play harness system. No matter what you're trying to accomplish, no matter how many lights you're trying to connect, you can connect them all with splitters, adapters, relay adapters, and so on. And you can come up with any configuration that you want and you don't have to get out a set of tools to cut and splice and crimp wire together and so on. So let's grab this relay adapter real quick, install it, and we'll be all set. All right, so here is our relay adapter. And as you can see, we've just got our connectors right here. And these are going to connect to our light bar. So the black is a ground, the red is the power. If you have your harness already grounded, say to, the, to a bolt on the fender or to the battery, you do not need to connect this. This is just a ground to ground that light. The relay itself is gonna be grounded with these two rings. One's power, one's ground. Obviously, the one that has the fuse on it is for the positive side of the battery. The black one is for the negative side. And then this end, with the blue wire sticking out, that is what goes to your switch. So we'll go ahead and connect it to our number five switch. That's the last remaining switch, just like this. And now our switch connection is made. And then the remaining connections we have, we have our power to our harness. So here is our light bar harness right here, just like that. And then the last connection we need to make is I did already ground the light bar harness. Now some of these harnesses you'll notice are gonna have both a plug connector like this and a, a ring here on the black. So that way it gives you the ability to connect it to either a bolt or if you are using a relay, you can plug it into the relay as well instead of the bolt. So it just eliminates you know, using the, the bolt method for that. But in this case, this particular harness doesn't have that additional connector, so we'll just ground it to the, the uh, bolt on the side here. Um, so now we just need to, again, connect this to our battery leads, and we're all set. All right, so now we've got our positive lead connected. Now the last thing we need to do is just connect our negative lead. And again, at the very end, you'll, you'll clean this up. But we'll go ahead and take our negative lead. Where do we want to run this? We can zip tie this along the, the battery here if we wanted to as well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, remove our battery post. You know, you can also you can also bolt this in here into the to the fender bolt instead of the battery if you'd prefer, which might be a little cleaner. So in this particular case, instead of bolting that to the battery, I'm going to go ahead and bolt that to the fender well here, to this bolt here on the side. Because I've got some old connections here I need to remove anyway, because we've made some changes, so we might as well just clean it up a little bit and remove those old ground cables that we no longer need. All right, so now we have got that grounded. And then again, from here, it's just a matter of just some cleanup. 
just clean these wires up and for right now we're going to tuck them in place but um, you get the idea aside from that it's just a matter of just cleaning up your wiring bundle making it a little cleaner but uh, but it's just plug and play it's that simple so let's go ahead and check out our lights all right as you can see now we've just got our ignition on i don't have it running but i have the ignition on and our backlight wire kit is powering our amber and so we see that's working so now let's just flip on the second switch and see if our fog lights work so we've got it plugged in now so now when we hit unlock on our button it should tie in here with the parking lights marker lights and so on we can lock that that'll turn them off and the same goes with running lights for when having the uh, lights on at nighttime as well. Those should also come on. All right, looks like we have a successful install. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe below. Visit spvparts.com or specialtyperformanceparts.com for this kit and several others. Again, subscribe to the channel here and you'll be able to keep up with all the new videos of new products and new installations that we do quite often. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again for watching.